morning folks. Welcome to the edge of Coniston. I am in the Lake District National Park. This is one of my final walks here actually before I move on on my travels. I've been here for 10 days so far, every single day bombing about the mountains. <laughs> and then yesterday I came down with a cold. Um, I spent some time in Scotland before this, so it's been a couple of weeks now that's been very intense. Just every day, mountain days, long days, sort of between seven and 12 hours out and about. I think it's finally catching up on me. <laughs> so I'm staying low, as I say, I'm by Coniston Water here and uh, I'm going to do just a little, I think it's about a six mile walk to Coniston Village itself and then to Tarn House past Tom Falls. There's going to be some beautiful scenery, it's going to be exciting and uh, I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a thunder shower because it is so humid right now. And here's Coniston right behind me. Let's have a closer look and then let's get on with the walk. Coniston Water is the third largest lake in the Lake District National Park by volume and the fifth largest by area. It's a wonderful example of a ribbon lake formed by glaciation and it sits in a U-shaped valley that would have been scoured by a glacier during the last ice age. Heading into the village of Coniston now, just a short walk along the road really. So Coniston uh, grew up around the farming industries and mining of copper and iron ore. And in the Victorian times, it became popular as a tourist destination. And really, that's the main economy going on here today. It's a lovely place, but geez, does it get busy on a sunny day. <laughs> as I followed the path, alongside were stunning wildflower meadows, alive with colour and life. Mountains frame the scene, and overall, I was reminded that low-level walks in the National Park can certainly offer some of the most stunning views. So I just accidentally missed my turning, which is going to take me over the beck. So I'm just walking along the road, I'm going to pick up another footpath a bit further on. Geez, you know, you know when you're just like all fluey and everything is just like not working <laughs> and it's like a hot sweat? That is me right now. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get detoxed in nature today. This would definitely be a lot nicer alongside the beck on the opposite side of the woods. <laughs> I just have to get past this little bit of road and then I can move in. So daft how that happens sometimes. Just miss like the most obvious footpaths. Everything around here is signed as well. That's the beauty of the Lake District, at least low level. Daft moment. <laughs> here we go, people. Public footpath. Skidoosh. I just have to figure out how to get through this weird thing. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so near yet so far. <laughs> Oh, really? Are we doing this today? Great, that's going to be icy. Maybe it'll do me good. Maybe it'll be the healing powers of the water. Boots off, socks off, let's go. This would be why the footpath went over the bridge earlier. The footpath that I missed. Yes. Ah. <laughs> oh. Ah. Oh, 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 made it. All right, socks back on, and then we hit the trail. <laughs> this is a vent for one mile so far. Right now then, we're working our way on towards Tarnhow Woods. Um, and then from there onto Tarn House itself and it's going to be really one of the highlights of the walk today. Um, used to be three tarns in the 1800s though. It was, well, dammed and uh, made into one big picturesque tarn and lots of conifers were planted because particularly at the time they were desired as scenically attractive trees. And nowadays it's a bit of a hot spot. It's very busy there for a little low-level walk, walking around the tarn. 
So we're going to walk around and it's going to be interesting. I haven't been back since I did the Cumbria Way, I think it was, 2015. And to be fair, as a kid, uh, I spent a lot of time there. Pretty much learned to walk walking around townhouse. Through the gate. Watch. Eventually there was a break in a dense canopy and I could see across to the high level walks that I love to explore, including the classic Coniston round. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out after this one, as it's a walk not to be missed. There's these magnificent oak trees. I mean, look at this, real gnarled and ancient really broad base as well and they're just littering the valley here We've got beach as well and then another oak up ahead and the bluebells of course we have picked up a tarmac track that sounds like a song we have picked up a tarmac track great stop this nonsense that way to coniston bluebells this way to tarn house let's go Right, just gotta figure out which way it is now. It's either that way or that way. I have a feeling it's this way. Let's go have a look. I'm trying to tap into that distant memory that is my childhood. <laughs> 24 years old, 25 in 15 days. That's a bit terrifying actually. There we go. So this is Tarn House. Check it out. So even on a grey day, it looks pretty beautiful. Purchased by Beatrix Potter in 1930, and by 1945, the entire estate was in the hands of the National Trust, who still own it now, making it freely accessible to everybody. Well, you've got to be a member, I suppose. Look at this, just beautiful. <laughs> Subtle hint about the National Trust aside, there really is something utterly magical about Tarn House, despite the fact that it's man-made. And being so accessible, it makes it a very popular spot for people to visit in the Lake District National Park. Job now is to walk around Tarn House and then we'll head all the way back to Coniston. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, let this part of the walk happen, tell the story through the visuals. So enjoy the footage that's going to come and I'll see you when we get back here having completed the round. Let's do this. The National Trust have made every effort to protect the lands around Tarn House from the heavy footfall and since 1965 it's been designated as a site of special scientific interest. In one way it's paid off, making this route highly accessible and a real treat for those who are unable to get high up into the hills. There's so much beauty all around, from the immense diversity of plants life Money trees, where people make a wish and put a penny in the logs. Beautiful views over the lake and lots of wildlife on the move. The circuit around the tarn is one that encourages peace and tranquility, stillness and deep breathing. It's almost spiritual, something you can only really truly understand by visiting the area.
Alrighty, I'm back. <laughs> so that was Tarn House. It's just beautiful, even in this really quite drab and overcast light. Really, really pleasant walk. It's quite busy. Um, I enjoyed just sort of losing myself in my head a little bit. Taking in the little things, it's amazing how much clear felling they're doing as well. But now, just as it's a little bit drizzy actually, um, we're gonna make our way back to the car. All right, let's head through the car park. What does this sign say? Coniston, ideal, two and a half miles. Let's go. I always find it really hard to capture a forest, but it feels like the purity of the air the depth of the green, the diversity of species from the canopy above to the forest floor. It's just alive, you know, there's the bird song, there's the gnarled bark of each and every individual tree. It's just such a all-consuming experience. And you know, you think about forest bathing, which has really kicked off. Um, Shinrin Yoku, that's what it's called, Japanese name. Basically, you know, people go into forests and they just be. They try to just blend in and merge with nature. And I, you know, I, I don't have an issue with these things being encouraged, but I find it almost odd that we have to prescribe them nowadays, that they have to become a trend for people to want to do them. Another wellness thing that, oh, I'm going to go forest bathing. It's like, well, people have walked through the woods for as long as humans have existed you know we are part of nature we need nature and i think so many mental illnesses come from a lack of connection a lack of connection to nature to ourselves which we gain through nature to meaning and purpose which we gain through being part of the big wide world there's so much depth to who we are and i think we're almost forced and crammed into a very narrow way of existing and we're just not built for that so forest for me, always a very reflective place. I can breathe a little bit deeper and stand a little bit taller. There we go. Monk Coniston, quarter of a mile back to the car park. And then Coniston, if that's where you ended up parking, is a mile and a half that way. Let's go. There's just so many impressive trees on this estate. Look at that. It's just ginormous. And then we've got this almost Asia like tree, I think it is. And then up ahead, rhododendron. Beautiful splash of colour. So there's the walled garden around here. And I don't know if that's something we can just go into or whether the footpath goes through. Just, uh, looks like the footpath goes through. Because I haven't really got very much time. I'm on a time schedule today. But, uh, take a peek anyway. Why not? The walled garden was a really nice spot. And despite being early in the growing season, there were plenty of plants about, giving the air a wonderful herbal fragrance. That is a very useful sign. Lake, this way. Just beautiful. Old man there <laughs> is uh, gone. You can't see the mountain at all, actually. I'm just heading down now towards the lake. So that's kind of it. Now, folks, I'm just going to walk through the drizzly rainness back to the car, which I can actually just see there. Um, I enjoyed that little route. I really struggled to get myself out this morning. Uh, yesterday I didn't manage at all. I've had my first ever rest day in my life. <laughs> um, I just like hung around the campsite and chilled and did some work and planned my itinerary actually, which was really good. But anyway, that was yesterday. And today is a whole new day and I managed to get out and I feel good for it. So uh, thank you for following along. Maybe this has inspired you to come and explore Tarn House and the surrounding hills of the Monk Coniston estate really is a special place and actually if I had more time and it was sunny I think I'd just find a tree and sit under it and just be be merry. <laughs> I 
I reckon in a day or two this cold will have shifted. I'm listening to my body, I'm learning to respect it, I'm on this whole new journey of pushing myself harder, faster, further, yet at the same time factoring in rest so that things are sustainable. I'm, uh, I'm learning a lot and uh, yeah, I've enjoyed this a lot today. So thank you, thank you for watching and uh, until next time, enjoy your own adventures, wherever they may be, and stay wild. I'll see you soon, bye.